Hello and welcome to the Greater Birmingham Chambers of Commerce uh, Q&A series and I'm delighted uh, to be joined again by Chamber Patron and, and leading regional business figure Mr Doug Wright. Doug, hello. Good morning Paul, it's only a week, time flies eh? Well yeah exactly and I mean you know we, we recorded a Q&A last week and we were talking about, about furloughing and, and your experiences uh, of that and um, we sort of put it out there and got a really great reception so we've sort of decided to make the second album haven't we and thought that we'd um, we'd get together again and maybe just just build on on that conversation um, and certainly talk about how, how you're coping with lockdown what are the sort of the, the, the tricks and the techniques and the routines that you've got into and then also I think and this is going to be really really important um, you know how you are preparing for when we, we get out of this and when, when business is able to, to reopen. And I suppose drilling into your own experiences and just some thoughts and advice for people who are, who are watching in. But um, I mean, just to, to start, I guess, Doug, just to link on from the um, part one and the, the conversation on furlough. So HMRC have now confirmed that the, the, the portal where you can sort of um, log all of the, the information in order to get the money is gonna open on Monday the 20th of April and that they're looking to um, start to make payments I think within the week uh, from that. Uh, what's your, your sort of take on that and I guess has that sort of uh, triggered an awful lot of activity or preparation on your part? Well first of all uh, I've got to say it'll be really really welcome. You know it seems uh, a, a long time ago that the Chancellor started talking and announced on the Friday evening furloughing mm -hmm. and he's been good to his word. He always said it would open in the third week of April. And as long as it opens next Monday, I think yeah. people will be relieved because there's two things they've announced. They've announced that payment will be within days. And secondly, they've added one really useful and additional piece, which is that before you had to qualify for furloughing, you had to be working with your employer by the 28th of February. Mm -hmm. They extended that by another three weeks, which is, proves the Chancellor and the government are listening. So what yeah. does that mean? It means that an extra 200,000 people who in essence had just started a new job will actually be qualified for furloughing. So yeah, it's great news as long as it happens on Monday. And I think there'll be a lot of people at their computer screen on Monday waiting to send the data. The data yeah. is pretty simple. It doesn't ask for copious amounts and it isn't onerous, but it is almost user friendly. But the proof will be in the pudding come Monday. But real progress, I'd say, from when we last spoke. And, you know, in terms of sort of then, then preparing you know, for Monday, you, know, you said uh, you know, the information isn't overly onerous, but, you know, is there a lot that you've got to do between now and then? Will you be there at eight o'clock in the morning on Monday? ready to fire stuff in or what's your sort of, what are you doing practically then? I think that if you go on hmrcgov.uk, the criteria yeah. of what you need is on there. It's just basic, basic information, how many people you're furloughing, what date from, your bank account details, etc. So I think your bookkeeper, or if you do it yourself, it, it's all explained on the website. Um, yeah. It's about seven or eight key bits of information, your employees and their payroll number. We're hoping when the furlough opens that you can actually uplift it from one software system to another. So that it will, it will okay. be, but until we actually see it, we are prepared for inputting, but we're more hoping that it is actually done instantaneously digitally. Yeah, well, as you say, I mean, it's positive news. It's what was set out. They've, they've hit that, that deadline. I think the key now is that, that the process works and works smoothly. Let's hope that it, it does for, for everyone's sake. And, and the point you made about uh, the extension of the, uh, the sort of the time frame and bringing those extra couple of hundred thousand people in, I think, is massively important. And, and as you know, I think one of the, the big lobbying points we're, we're sort of running at the moment at the Chamber is about you know, sort of minding the gaps there's, there's it's all being built very very quickly i think it's well intentioned but there are a number of gaps which are affecting individuals and organizations and um you know we're certainly shouting about them when we see them pushing that in and 
this is a good case where it seems that people are listening, government are listening and trying to do the right thing. So um, that's positive. So Doug, so just sort of moving on, obviously, you know, you, you've furloughed um, you know, your workforce, you know, you've had to shut. So you know, in terms of you know, going from running a 24-7 uh, operation, I mean, how have, how are you getting through it? Have you, you know, sort of found yourself setting up new routines to sort of get through time frame when, when your, your regular routine, I guess, would have changed so much? Yeah, I mean, my days, as you know, have always been pretty long, you know, with my own work, with the lieutenancy work, and then with Ronald McDonald House Charities. So I think for me, the, the real change is just you get up and then you walk upstairs to start work. And like, you know, I've maintained a really rigorous routine. What yeah. I've learned since we closed the restaurants that everything you have has got to have real fluidity because you can get up, have a plan, but it changes hour by hour and you have to react accordingly, whether it's talking to the charity, talking to a staff member who's got issues. It's really, it's unprecedented times and sort of very different. You know, I think the one thing I've really picked up is you have to be able to adapt to anything here and now. It's not as structured, but no, I'm enjoying it. I suppose the only thing is it's really different being home-based, but even doing something like this, I think that the key message is when it all goes back to normal, and it will, is that there's lots of little learns we can get about getting more time at home and having more quality time through embracing technology. You know, yeah. many, many times I'm driving to Birmingham, Solihull, to do an interview or talk to somebody. Maybe this is the future. So in terms of to answer your plan, having a really strict routine um, and planning everything, but trying to prioritize what's important here and now. And, and you know, how are you ensuring that, that your people, uh, your staff are sort of staying engaged throughout sort of furlough and, and sort of keeping, uh, making sure they're all okay? Are there, you know, is there a process that you're following to do that? Yeah, we're having, a, first of all, we're having a lot of fun. And I think the key learn is don't forget your staff just because they're sitting at home and you don't see them. They need a lot of love, care and attention, you know, and they've got to feel part of what's happening you know in the first few days people were really nervous even though you know they knew someone was coming in and we were paying them and we kind of realized the big trick was to use our closed facebook and to record short videos make sure because not everyone's as well connected and when you're the leader of a business you mustn't assume that everyone knows what you do so we have really worked tirelessly to keep sending short bites out saying this is what's happening and just updating them and we've been overwhelmed at how grateful people have been so the number one tip is don't forget your workforce just because you can't see them they've all got the same feelings and they're all anxious and part of a good leader is to make sure that you address that constantly we do two or three social events on facebook each week this week we've got uh, McDonald's has got talent. So Britain's got talent, but we're doing it on social media. So they record a short video. We found out that we've got some really, really talented people away from their day jobs. You know, we've got a lady who applied to yeah. sing England. We've got a really good singer. We've got the usual clowns who are trying the toilet roll trick, you know, with football skills. Um, and everyone's been asking me to do one, but I don't think I have any talents away from work. So I've kind of parked oh. that. But we're having loads of fun. And then once a week on a Friday, we're having a serious video, which talks about everything that's happened in the outside world, how it relates to us, and then starting to see about how we're going to look to reopen. So don't forget your people, bring them with you. Yeah, and and I'm sure one day I'm sure there will be a video that you uh, you send in, Doug, and uh, I'll have to have a look at that one day. See if we can share it, maybe. Hey, I think you're being a bit too modest there. <laughs> It'll probably be on my probably on the week I'm leaving, which hopefully isn't for a very very, very long time. Now, now you mentioned there you know, about reopening um, and just I mean, 
how much uh, planning are you doing around that? And I guess there's so many variable factors. You know, we, that looks like lockdown is going to be extended uh, for at least three weeks, which would take us up to the, um, the Friday the 8th of May bank holiday. Um, there's been some news today around um, a very, very limited number of uh, chains of, of some uh, non-McDonald's fast food um, restaurants sort of reopening uh, for delivery only. So how are you sort of managing that and, and I guess preparing? There's, there's two parts to it. There's a local piece, which is obviously, you know, my own 20 restaurants, getting them ready and and we've also got the national piece where we're very, very fortunate to work as part of a wonderful system, that of McDonald's, which in essence is my franchise all. But they're very, very good. Ourselves locally, we're starting to work out how many people we're going to need, what concept are we going to reopen, is it going to be delivery, is it going to be drive-through only? And I think part of what we're doing and planning locally and nationally is that it would be naive to think we're going to reopen how we used to try to do business. That, you know, social distancing and enhanced practices are going to be the norm for God knows how long. So we've got very fluid plans, plans that we can now bring into place as soon as we know what the national guidance is from the government. Like you, I'm expecting this evening that there will be a formal confirmation, I guess, of another three weeks as a minimum. And we mm -hmm. kind of welcome that, you know, as human beings, that I think it would be wrong to reopen until, you know, this awful thing is passing and that you know, we'd all do as much as we can to help rid of it. So our plans are ready. They are ready to be executed once we know what's happening. In mm -hmm. terms of the bigger piece, our supply chain, McDonald's are having to work assiduously to make sure that our plans are ready. You know, that yeah. McDonald's, you know, we've got 120,000 workers in the UK and, you know, a massive supply chain. And like us, many of their workers will be furloughed. So it's making sure that, I think it's naive to say that we're open, we're all open, just bang, and we're all reopened. I think it will be a phased approach to get the supply chain, you know, moving yeah. again. And I think ultimately, you know, how our plans are going to be dictated to our what is how the country is doing and the deaths have slowed down and then we're coming down the other side of the curve. Yeah. And I mean, you mentioned the, the supply chain. I mean, have you done a lot of keeping in touch with, with your suppliers and, and, you know, making sure that they're not just okay, but as you say, ready to, to respond and it is going to be staggered it isn't going to be the big bang sort of opening so i guess uh, everyone recognizes that and it'll be a sort of a gradual return but that must be a big part of what you're doing on a daily basis yeah i mean it's a big part of what we're doing locally and nationally you know the mcdonald's <laughs> team are obviously talking to everybody to make sure that as we have information it's passed so that i guess it's part of a three-legged stool approach of the corporation mcdonald's franchisees and also our suppliers, you know, McDonald's supply chain are fantastic, but that like us, when it comes to reopening, they've got to start all again. So we're talking to each other is the key point. And we, you yeah. know, we're making sure that as we have information that goes round 360, because we won't yeah. do this well unless we're all ready. And one yeah. thing's for sure that myself, that my, I'm quite harsh on myself, but I think the thing that I want to make sure is that we aren't left behind, that we're ahead of the curve, that you can sit at home and worry about oh, our restaurants are closed, but you've got to work tirelessly to make sure when we are allowed to reopen that we're ahead of the curve, you know, we're ready to go. Yeah. And I, feel, I feel ready to go now, and that's good, so that when things come into place, that we're ready. You know, you don't need one of these people saying, oh, you know, we're closed, so feel sorry for us, etc. You know, yeah. the only thing, we're ready. We, you know, we're, we're looking forward to it. Our plans can be brought into play in any particular way, but it will be much tougher reopening than shutting. Yeah. Because yeah. you've got to look at all your products. You've got to get your product back in the fridge, the freezer, the stock rooms, 
you've got to get the staff back in, you've got to look at how you're going to social distance, you've got to look at enhanced hygiene practices. You, there's so much. We thought it was tough shutting down and locking up 20 restaurants, but it is going to be far tougher and the smart people will really, really, really make sure they've got a plan on how to bring, yeah. start the, almost like, you know, starting the engine again after everything's been hibernating. Yeah, and I think, I mean, no, there's, there's lots of uh, sort of good thoughts in there. I think in particular, what you mentioned around thinking about how sort of social distancing uh, measures will impact your business. You know, you sort of in, in restaurants, that's, that's sort of pretty clear, but I think that's something for everyone to think about and it won't just be a return to normal. And certainly, you know, for the, the immediate period, once we're allowed, um, sort of back to work, uh, as it were. I think that's, that's going to impact an awful lot of uh, organisations. And these are the sort of things that, that people should be thinking about now, thinking ahead of the curve. And I guess, you know, we know there's a big push to get PPE uh, to, to the frontline staff who need it, you know, NHS and, and care workers. But, you know, down the line, it will also be ensuring that, that a lot of um, uh, staff who are in customer-facing roles uh, are equipped as well, for example, isn't there? So it's sort of trying to to look around corners as much as you possibly can, isn't it? Yeah, I think you know you've got. We 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 really have, you know, had a complete review of everything we do because you know, as a, if you're a good leader, it's times like this when you can stop and you can sort of look at everything all over again. You know, a roots and branch review of operating. So for us, we're going to have to make lots of small changes but all those small changes are going to sort of feed in together and make sure that we're open in a respectful way and that it, it, it's yeah. reflective of what society expects and what is correct in society so you know when we shut that was one set of rules when we open we're going to have this new rules new way of and i think it will almost naturally evolve you know it's not going to be a revolution it's going to be an evolution and you know it's just being empathetic and sympathetic to what's happening in the country right now yeah and you know, just i mean what's your sense in terms of pent up demand uh and you know i guess you know from you know people wanting a mcdonald's i mean i'd imagine when you do reopen and again if it's sort of delivery first of all one of the big challenges will be managing demand won't it as you we're restarting the engine It'll be people will be uh, sort of clamouring, I guess, to to get hold of of, of your food. I th you know, I think it's true to say that you know our CEO, who's done a wonderful job through this, you know, very very stressful period, when he announced on the Sunday that McDonald's were doing the socially responsible thing and closing, hmm. I think it would be fair to say that we were fairly busy on the Monday before the show. <laughs> and then, yeah. You know, which is a great thing, but also. I think that when we reopen, whether it's delivery, you know, delivery, takeaway only for a while, however it is, I think the great British public do love a McDonald's. And, you know, I have a confession to make that, you know, I've been working at McDonald's for 39 years and I am dying for some chicken nuggets. <laughs> but, you know, please don't pass that on. So we are going to be busy. But I, think, <laughs> I think busy is one piece. I think the really important piece is that we open in a way that the staff feel safe and comfortable in their environment and likewise yeah. the customers do. So when we reopen, it's got to be people first, people being our employees and our customers. And that's why, you know, it'll be a phased approach because we'll be busy. And, you yeah. know, whilst, whilst the restaurants are being closed, you know, I know that a lot of people personally have reached out to me about a good story for you. McDonald's put a recipe out about 10 days ago on social media, and it was how to make your own sausage and egg McMuffin. Right. And I thought it was a real nice touch as people were missing the McDonald's food that, you know, our corporate communications team actually sent out a recipe of how to make it yourself. Yeah. And again, secret number two, mine was not wonderful. You know, it was not... <laughs> It wasn't up to McDonald's standards. And I followed the recipe, yeah? And Mrs. Wright said, you know, that is poor. So I didn't pass the, the, the internal test. But 
I think the brand's done what it can to keep everyone engaged. Yeah. And I think, yes, we're going to be busy, but we've got to do it in the right way because society expect, expects, and I want to do the right yeah. thing by my customers and my people. No, that, 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 that sort of um, sense of responsibility and integrity, you know, really runs through, always does, you know, both yourself and, and the corporation. But I think at this sort of time, that, that, that's very, very clear. I can't believe, Doug, after 39 years, um, that you weren't up to scratch. I mean, that's, uh, I, I also can't believe that you haven't got a, a secret stash of uh, chicken McNuggets somewhere in the freezer. But um, there we right. go, mate. Uh, they, just they, they, to, to wrap up, um, I guess any, 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 sorry, go on. No, no, I'm, no, I'm good. I was just going to say, Doug, just to, to wrap up, I mean, any final thoughts for, for business owners or uh, leaders out there who, you know, have a large part of their staff furloughed right now as we start to think about, you know, um, reopening and that 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 bounce back any anything that you would sort of say that you're particularly uh, doing over and above maybe what we've, we've covered already just to, to finish on i guess my guiding mantra is you know it's very very simple but it's been sort of ever since i had a franchise you know plan meticulously planning for a reopening is something we've never all done because we've not all ever had to be mandated mm. to be shut so have plans but i guess most importantly you know, treat people the way you want to be treated yourself. You know, what you might know, pass it down the line and keep yeah. it as a, almost like a conveyor belt. As it, the information comes to you, move it around your own workforce. Don't have people sitting at home wondering what's happening. Talk to them. You know, and people greatly, greatly, greatly respect that and they appreciate it. So communication is number one for me. And number two is be ready and make sure those plans are really fluid because this world we live in right now changes by the hour. I think the last thing yeah. that I'd want to say, given you know how many people watch this, you know, from myself and all my workforce, thank you to the NHS because they stood up and they've been absolutely awesome for this country. So from all at McDonald's and my own franchise, a huge thank you to the NHS. Doug, thank you very much. It's a great way to uh, to wrap up, and certainly, you know, myself and the, the team at the the chamber would uh, would heartily echo that. Um, thank you for for joining us again. Will there be a third album? We'll have to wait and see. But um, I hope we, I hope, hopefully, we'll speak again next week, and I may have a couple of questions for you. What you've been doing at the chamber, sir? Sounds like a plan. Thanks very much, Doug. Have a great day. Thank you. <laughs>